Oh man, come on. We're going to do a lot of things here today. I said hello. hello. We come here for two reasons. What do you think the first one might be? We come here, number one, to praise the Lord and to learn about the Bible. That sound fair? That's why we come. But we come here for a second reason, too. You know what we come here for? We come here to have fun. I believe that God has no problem with us having fun while we're learning the Bible. Amen? Amen. Are you all ready to have some fun? Yeah. All right, all right. I want you to make some noise today. I want you to get ready to make some noise. We're going to teach you a song about dinosaurs. Now, we all danced with you just now, okay? I didn't know them. I'm going to teach you a song about a dinosaur. Is that fair? We're going to get you up out of your seats. We're going to have, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, my, my name, again, is, uh, is Pastor Dick Webster, but uh, they just I go by a simple name. They call me Dino Papa. You know, why, you know why I think they may call me that name? I love dinosaurs. How many here like dinosaurs. I, I'm telling you, I love dinosaurs. But you know something, kids? There's one bad thing about dinosaurs, and that is they've been used by the devil as one of the biggest lies that has ever been told. They've been used by the devil uh, to trick people into questioning the Bible. I noticed earlier, Miss Sharon, Pastor Sharon asked, asked you a question. Uh, about how many of you have read about dinosaurs. You know something? Most people don't even know that dinosaurs are in the Bible. Most people don't even know that because they're not called dinosaurs in the Bible. They're called dragons. And the reason they are is because the word dinosaur is a relatively new term. Uh, it's not old. It was only invented about 100 years ago. So when they wrote the Bible, they didn't even know what a dinosaur was. They just called them dragons. Uh, we're going to do some things today uh, that's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun with y'all. I'm going to teach you some things. I hope anyway. Y'all ready to learn today? <laughs> Come on, we got to get excited now. You ready to learn? Yeah. All right, all right. We are Cave Ministries, and I want to thank every one of you for inviting us out here today. We love to do this. We love to come out and talk about dinosaurs and talk about creation, talk about the stars. When we get done here today, kids, we got some dinosaur stuff over here. We got a Noah's Ark. You're welcome to look at all this stuff. Uh, we might even have a couple goodies laying around. We're going to have fun today while we do this. Now, there's one thing that you get to get real active with, okay? Uh, before I even get started, how many of y'all have ever heard of the word evolution? Who can tell me something real quick about evolution? What do you think it teaches? That we were what? We weren't humans at the beginning. Okay, yep, exactly right. Uh, that's probably it in a nutshell, actually. Uh, they teach you, we came from monkeys. How many of y'all think we came from monkeys? Okay, right. I've checked my daddy and my grandpa, and none of them look like no monkeys, but we'll get into that later on. Number two, they teach you about something else that is a lie from the beginning. How old do they teach you the earth is? Have y'all ever heard of millions of years or billions of years old? Well, today, every time I use the word millions, this is how I check if you listen or not. Every time I say the word millions of years or billions of years, I want you to yell out, Lie! I want you to yell it out at the top of your lungs and maybe I'll quit saying it. The millions of years... Lie! We're getting, we're getting good. We're, good. We're, we're on target here. They teach you these things so that you'll not believe your Bible in some ways. And what they do is they take the dinosaurs and they go way back with them. And that they teach you that all oh, about 60 million years ago... Dinosaurs went extinct. How many have heard that dinosaurs don't live no more? They're all gone. Well, how do they know that? Did they ask you if you ever saw one? Did they ask your mom and dad if they ever saw one? Well, how do they know if you never saw one? You see, they all don't know that they're extinct. In fact, the interesting thing is, and we may talk a little later if we get a chance, dinosaurs may very well still be alive. We believe they are. They're not as big as they used to be uh, because of our air. But the fact of the matter is, kids, dinosaurs may not be extinct at all. And we're going to show you a couple things about dinosaurs. 
Let's, uh, let's talk about first, I like to, uh, we've talked about evolution and, and, and the Bible. The Bible teaches something very different. Uh, evolution teaches us one thing. The Bible teaches us something else. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, I want you all to say that verse with us. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Say it with me one more time. This is our verse, our keynote verse for today. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We believe something very different. I do not believe you came from a monkey. I do not believe your parents came from a monkey. I believe that monkeys are monkeys, and I believe that people are people. And I think God created you just like that. But you know what the really cool thing is? You know how special that makes you? I don't care how much money you got. I don't care about where you live. You know something? Because you're a person, God finds you to be very special. And a lot of folks say, well, maybe when do we turn special? Do we turn special at 16 years old or maybe at 18 years old? Oh, no. You were special the day you were born. God created you. And God puts you together. And God puts you together for a very, very specific person purpose. In the beginning, God created the, uh, the heavens and the earth. On day six, kids, God's created man, uh, the animals and man, and that includes the dinosaurs. The Bible says that God created the great beasts of the field. We believe in our ministry that that's probably the day that dinosaurs were put together. Uh, he talks about the whales that were created in the sea. A couple of animals he mentions specifically, but how big is a dinosaur? Give me an idea. How, how big do you think a, di a dinosaur actually is? How big? Huh? Think they're pretty big? I think they're pretty big. How big? Bigger than two football fields. That would be a humongous dinosaur. But that's that's the whole idea. A lot of people picture dinosaurs as being really, really, really big, and some of them were really, 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 really big. Some of them. Uh, weighed as much as 14 school buses put together. Now, how many think that's a big animal? That is a real big animal. Let's take a look at our first dinosaur. Who can tell me what this is? Man, there's a man right there. Somebody get him a shirt, man. That's <laughs> get this boy into ministry. This is a stegosaurus. There's a couple things about a stegosaurus that are very interesting. Uh, first off, if you notice up here at the picture, kids, Notice these spikes back here in the back. People think, well, that was a pretty mean animal. No, actually, it wasn't a mean animal at all. Uh, we, we believe that what those spikes were used for were for defense. They actually defended. What's, what's going to happen if a, if a T-Rex comes by and tries to take a bite out of him? Hmm? There you go. And that T-Rex will go running away. Ain't getting no bite out of me, buddy. But he had these big plates up here. And these were also to protect him from animals trying, trying to attack him. You all know what this guy ate? Grass. He was a, he was a grass eating, uh, oh, I lost my picture. He was a, he was a grass eating, uh, a grass eating dinosaur. Uh, we don't believe he ate meat whatsoever. Uh, later on, uh, when we get done here, if you look at his tail and on his back there, we got two of them bones here with us today. Uh, you can see how big they, how big they actually were. And I think we got them. Somewhere around here, they'll be, out, they'll be out after we're done. What about this guy here? Triceratops. What was unique about the triceratops? How many horns did he have? Three. Let's go. One, two, three. No, some people, some people think this is a horn right here also, which would have been four. But he actually had three on top of his head. And then he had that one coming down the front. And some people think, well, was that to tear me apart? What do you think this guy ate? Plants. He was also a plant eater. I will threaten you with this. If, you know what I mean? Okay. Did we forget to do the six days? So that's... Oh, it's coming. Oh, did we? Okay. No, you're already in the... Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I get so excited about talking about dinosaurs, I forgot the puppets. <laughs> but the puppets are coming. <laughs> I get excited about dinosaurs. I love talking about dinosaurs. Triceratops, we've also got one we brought with us, kids, called Sarah. She's, she's back here. There she is over there. 
Sarah, you'll be able to pet her later on. She'll growl at you. She'll look at you. If you tickle her on the side, she'll turn and look at you. Uh, Sarah's pretty cool, but that's our, little, that's our little triceratops. So right now, we've talked about how many days did it take God to create everything? Do you remember? Six. And on the seventh day, God rested. Boy, this, is a good, this is a good group right here. Uh, six days it took God. So let's listen to our puppets now sing you a song about In Six Days. Exodus 20, 11 makes it clear It didn't take God a million years The Bible tells how the world began Skillfully created by the Master's hand For in six days He made the heavens and the earth The sea and all that is in them With love in His heart He created all Maker of the world is the King of Kings. The Bible teaches that the world is young, but God works quick and it's no problem. Then He rested when He was through. He created the weak for me and you. For in six days He made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. Love in his heart, he created all things. The maker of the world is a king of kings. Now if you're down and you have a bad day, lift your eyes to heaven and pray. God's your friend and he cares for you. Nothing's too hard for God to do For in six days He made the heavens and the earth The sea and all that is in them With love and His heart He created all things The maker of the world is the king of kings Woo, let's hear it for the puppets! Y'all like puppets? Our puppets are going to be rocking today for you. We, 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 like, we like to get our puppets going. Let me talk to you about a couple more dinosaurs. You all seem pretty sharp on these guys right here. This guy was a plant eater. This guy was over 25 feet long. A very, very large uh, horned dinosaur that actually ate grass. This guy here, pterodactyls. What do you think pterodactyls? What's unique about pterodactyls? They fly. A lot of people nowadays are saying, well... Maybe they weren't dinosaurs at all. Let's not put them in the dinosaur category any, anymore. You know why they're doing that? Because they found these guys alive. They have found pterodactyls flying in the skies. And so what they've said is, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dinosaurs went extinct 60 million years ago. Dinosaurs are extinct. They can't be flying, so, but we know they are, so let's not make them dinosaurs anymore. Is that silly? That's goofy. It is a dinosaur. He's just a flying dinosaur. Dino some dinosaurs were in the water. Some dinosaurs were on the land. They're all in the same category. These guys are very, very interesting animals. These were definitely meat eaters uh, by the looks of their mouth and stuff like that, what we can tell. Uh, their size went from just a few inches. Very, very small birds. They went all the way from there to over 40 feet long. Uh, 40 feet long would be almost probably white line to white line, and this thing here would be his wings. Very, very large birds uh, that, that flew through the air. Uh, many of them called them the large black bats uh, that, that they've, they've actually found these guys doing. Uh, pterodactyls, if you ever hear that, uh, the reason they're trying to decategorize them, kids, is because they don't want them to be called dinosaurs anymore because they think they may be living. Here's T-Rex. How many of you have ever seen T-Rex? What's your favorite dinosaur? Is it a T-Rex? T-Rex is usually the favorite of everybody. How many like the long neck dinosaur? <coughs> I like, I like long necks too. I think long necks are really, really cool. Kind of wish I had one of these guys in my backyard. I think it'd be pretty cool to do. Um, T-Rex was definitely a meat eater, no doubt about that. T-Rex was as big as 20 feet tall. That would be almost probably as big as that bounce house when it was blown up. 
uh, would be probably very, very close to 20 feet tall, almost to the ceiling up here. Uh, would have been the size of a T-Rex. Um, not sure how long this is, but probably up to the beams up there. These were very, very large dinosaurs. They ran on two legs. They had two little legs on the front. Uh, but isn't it interesting that God created all of the dinosaurs for also very specific purposes? They all did different things. They all ate different things. And what wouldn't have been neat to live back in the day when possibly dinosaurs were actually out there walking in your back. You, you said, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm good where I am, right? <laughs> you know, I'm real good. You, know, you think about this, though. When God created Adam and Eve, okay, he created dinosaurs on the same day. How many of y'all got a dog in your backyard or cats? Yeah? You know what, you know what Adam had? A couple T-Rexes, a couple long-necked dinosaurs. They were just created. They were, they, were, they were in Adam's backyard. The beauty is, none of them ate meat back then. We won't get into all that today. They turned into meat eaters after sin entered the world because sin affected all the animals. So back then, they were really, really good. So as long as they don't eat meat, I, we're okay. We're, we're, we're in with it. Um, but that's the way God created them. Sin made the T-Rex into a meat eater. God created the T-Rex to be a really, really good dinosaur and to be a pet, just like you have a dog. Now you want one? No, she says, I, don't. <laughs> I want you this one here. She's real skeptical on this. <laughs> Brachiosaurus, what's he look like? Say it loud. Long neck. Long neck dinosaur. That's the big guy. This is the biggest one that we have found, okay? Uh, they've got these guys going different uh, scales. Uh, we call them a Brachiosaurus. Some people call them a Brontosaurus. Um, I don't care what you call him. He was a long neck, and he was really, really big. Uh, they've, gone, they've gone to well over 60 feet tall on uh, some of the great big ones. But what did this guy also eat? Plants. Do you notice we've only had two dinosaurs we've talked about that ate meat? The rest of the dinosaurs were all friendly. Very, very friendly animals. And we also talk about the big dinosaurs, don't we? How big do you think the average size dinosaur actually was? Take a guess, how big you think, put all the dinosaurs that God created together, how big would be the average of them? 30 feet, okay. Anybody got any ideas? Most people, 30, 40, uh, some people say maybe 20 feet, 25, because every dinosaur you see, how big is he? He's huge. The average size dinosaur was no bigger than a goat. Most dinosaurs were actually very small animals. They were very small. The ones you and I always talk about are the really, really big ones. But I like talking about them. You know why? Because we're going to do a song here in just a minute about a long-necked dinosaur that was found inside the Bible. How many of you all heard the book of Job? The book of Job. Job teaches us in Job chapter 40. Uh, how many of you can speak Hebrew? None of you? Now let me teach you some, okay? You want to learn some Hebrew? Behold now behemoth, which I made with thee, he eats grass as an ox. You all say the word behemoth. 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 You have just spoken your first Hebrew word. The word behemoth is not an English word. The reason it's not an English word is they didn't know what behemoth was. They couldn't identify him. So they said, I don't know what it is. Let's just leave the word alone. We'll just call them behemoth. That's what they called them. So that's what we're going to call them. This, we believe, with all our hearts, is a dinosaur. Uh, and, I'll show, and I'll show you why here as we go along. Lo, his strength is in his loins. How big was the legs on a dinosaur? Huge. His strength was in his, lo his, strength was in his loins. The force was in the navel of his belly. He had a big belly. Okay? He had a great big belly. I mean, that's cool. It goes on. The elephants, they have a big belly. Some people think Behemoth was an elephant. He has a big belly. Well, let's look at the rhinoceros. The rhinoceros, does he not have a big belly? Maybe it could be a rhinoceros. A hippo. I'm sorry. A hippo. Very, thank you for correct. Keep me straight, okay, kids? The hippo has a big belly also. Could he be Behemoth? Well, he also has a very big belly. So he could be Behemoth. Well, he has a big belly, too. 
could, could he be behemoth? Well, how about this guy? He has a big belly too. Could he be behemoth? I don't think they are. I don't think they are. But so we've got to go beyond the belly. He, this guy here it said the Bible says he moved his tail like a cedar tree. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. This guy's tail was so big, it was as big as a cedar tree, and he waved it like a tree when he waved it. Now let's go back and look at our animals. Does that look like a cedar tree? I don't think so. Uh, how about that one? I don't think that does either. But look at this guy. Do you see the tree there? All the way from the top of the tree, all the way to the base of the tree right there. It looks almost like a cedar And when he waved it, he would actually, uh, some of, they think maybe some small one of these guys are possibly living. And some of the uh, Africans actually tell us that if he hits something with his tail, it'll kill even crocodiles. It's so powerful. Very, very, it was nothing but one pure muscle. Uh, obviously with the bone on the inside, but nothing, nothing muscle. Very, very strong tail. And his name in the Bible, kids, was Behemoth. And we're going to sing a song here in just a second. I want to teach you all the songs. If we don't take nothing else home today, I want you to take home a song about Behemoth. Because I think Behemoth is cool. Uh, Behemoth was a great, great guy. So let's all stand up. We're going to get our puppets ready. You got to help with this song, okay? You got to help me with this song. And our puppets are going to help out. And we're going to have a couple of our folks come out here and help us out too. This is what you got to do. First off, you got to be your dinosaur. Behemoth is a dinosaur. This is your dinosaur. Put your fist up and kind of drop his head a little bit. Well, you look like a dinosaur. Behemoth is a dinosaur. A dinosaur is he. He eateth grass as an ox. I want you to bend over and kind of get, you're a dinosaur now. I want you to turn into one. He eateth grass as an ox. And then stick your tail out there. His tail's like a cedar tree. Okay, we're going to have to do better than this, folks. <laughs> we're going to have to do better than this, okay? Get your dinosaurs up. Behemoth is a dinosaur. A dinosaur is he. He eateth grass as an ox. Get that tail. His tail's like a cedar tree. Okay, now we're doing better. Now we're doing better. His tail's like a cedar tree. His bones are strong as bars of iron. He's chief in the ways of God. Behemoth is a dinosaur. Then I want you to put the meanest dinosaur face you can. A mighty sauropod. Really get that dinosaur face. Are you ready for that? Do we got something for the better one? I don't know if we do or not. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? You sing along. I'll click the words here. Watch these folks over here. They're all used to doing this. <coughs> Behemoth was a dinosaur. Ready? Get him up. Behemoth is a dinosaur, a dinosaur is he. He eateth grass as an ox, his tail's like a cedar tree. His bones are strong as bars of iron, he's chief in the ways of God. Could Behemoth be a dinosaur, a mighty sore of high? That's good. Here we go. Let's look Listen at the Bible. Let's look at the book of Job. Here's a volume. Turn to chapter 40. In verse 15 we're told Of a mighty creature That Job must have known In the jungle of the reeds and ferns Behemoth made his home Behemoth is a dinosaur A dinosaur is he He eateth grass as an ox His tail's like a cedar tree His bones are strong as bars of iron He's cheap in the ways of God could behemoth be a dinosaur, a mighty sore of Boy, you've got that dinosaur look down. Some people say, some say behemoth is nothing more than this. An elephant? An elephant or, or a hippo. <laughs> but I don't think it fits. No. Because they don't have a tail like a cedar tree. Behemoth sounds much more like a dinosaur to me. Behemoth is a dinosaur, a dinosaur is he. He eateth grass as an ox, his tail's like a cedar tree. His bones are strong as bars of iron, he's cheap in the ways of God. Could Behemoth be a dinosaur, a mighty sore apart? Amen, good deal. 
Good, good, good job. Behemoth is a dinosaur. A dinosaur, as Job said in the book of uh, Job chapter 40, Job said, whatever this creature is, he says, I'm going to call him Behemoth. He says, he's chief in the ways of God. He said, that is the biggest thing that God ever made. Do you think that could be a dinosaur? If he was looking at a long-necked dinosaur, very possibly, I know I would say that. How about you? I, I know if it was me out there, I'd be saying, yeah, buddy, that is absolutely the biggest thing that God ever made. We're going to give a little lesson right now, but, you know, uh, usually before I do this, I, I, I got a really, really good friend uh, that, that, I, that I bring along with some of the shows I do for the kids, and uh, we, we don't let them out very often. Okay, so I want you to, I want you to bear with me, okay? We, we, don't, we don't let this guy out very often. Uh, he kind of stays in our cave laboratories and does, does some work for us in there, uh, does some funny things, but uh, his name is Professor Bronto. So if y'all would, real quick, I want you to put your hands together. This guy is shy, so you got to make him feel really welcome, okay? Let's put our hands together and welcome in Professor Bronto. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> professor, professor, it's good, it's good to see you. You're, 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 looking, you're looking good. <laughs> can, can you see okay today? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Bronto is a very, very good friend, but he's got some little things he brought in his little box over there. I was looking through some of it earlier uh, to kind of help us along with this story. So let's get started here. Let's start out first off with the two theories. What's the one theory of creation? Evolution. That's one theory. We believe the Bible. That's the other theory. We're going to talk about evolution, and I want you to listen to this story because this, to me, is just one of the silliest stories I ever heard. But you know something, kids? People believe it. What they say is they say this. They say that <clears throat> about 20 billion years ago, one more time, you got to yell it out, about 20 billion years ago, <coughs> absolutely nothing began to spin around. Does anybody know how nothing starts spinning? I, I don't figure that out either, but that's what they say. They say absolutely nothing started to spin. And it began to spin. And it was faster, and it was faster, and it was faster. And then it got smaller and smaller and smaller as it got down to a dot on a page. And all of a sudden, one day, bang! Wow. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> All of a sudden, one day, that bang happened, and psh, the whole universe started revolving around. Now, where did it come from? But that's what they want you to, that's what they want you to believe, that that's how our universe started over 20 billion years ago. Then they say, well, that was all rotating out there around and doing its thing, and all of a sudden, about 4.6 billion years ago, this is what happened to the Earth. The Earth was when well, the earth was formed and it was kind of a molten mass and then all of a sudden the earth began to cool down and it turned into a big rock and a rock was spinning around out there and then it began to rain on this rock for millions of years millions and millions <coughs> and all of a sudden that rock with all the water turned into a hot molten mass and what happened with that was that that, that hot molten mass turned into what we call a pre-mortal soup how many think the earth was one day a pre-mortal soup? And inside that soup, all of a sudden, one day, boop, a little amoeba popped out. Now, they don't know where that came from, or they don't even know how it got there, but this little guy popped up out of the, the pre-mortal soup. And you know what it started to do? It started to have babies. We don't know how it had babies either. It was the only one out there. But all of a sudden, it began to duplicate itself. And all of a sudden, that little guy turned into a fish. That little amoeba that you couldn't even see turned into a fish. That fish turned into an amphibian. The amphibian got out and walked around a little bit. The amphibian eventually turned into a reptile, or maybe a dinosaur right here. And the reptile turned into a mammoth or a monkey. They call that the farm rule. That's what they label it now. You'll see that in your textbooks, kids. It's called farm. Fish to amphibian to reptile to mammal. And you know what the monkey turned into? You. Yep. That's what you used to do, kids. 
You used to crawl around trees and eat bananas. They're walking around in the jungles and the forests out there. That's what they want you uh, to believe. They go on, and they say that about, uh, about three million years ago, that all of a sudden that monkey turned into a man. And that's how each one of us was created. It started from absolutely nothing. It began to spin around. It blew up. And as, as things began to evolve. Things began to turn into other things. And eventually, you appeared. But you know something? I got another story for you. I got another term for creationism, for how you were created. The Bible tells us that 6,000 years ago... Oh, we're not millions now. <laughs> They're sharp, man. They're sharp. These are not millions of years. These are thousands of years. All the, year. the earth is actually very, very young. The earth is not millions of years old. The earth is actually only a couple thousand years old, a few thousand. And the Bible teaches us that God in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. And about 6,000 years ago, God looked down and he did all this creation he said, I'm going to create man. On day six, God created Adam. Adam was down there in dust. Uh, Adam, uh, God formed this man out of the dust. What are you shaking your head for? No, no, professor, professor. We're out of that story now, man. We're back. We're in the other story now. That's not what God created. Well, he did create him, but let, let's bring a man out. Okay, Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. If you see something like that, just shout it out, okay? Don't, don't let him do that. We, that's why we keep him locked up. <laughs> God created man, and out of the rib, God, God took a rib out of the man, and he created what? Eve. He created Eve. <laughs> we need the lady now, Professor. The, the... What happened? You can't see? That's... <laughs> Is that the problem you can't see me? Hey, let's give Professor Brown to a hand. <coughs> God created Adam and Eve. And as soon as God created Adam and Eve, you know what happened? The devil came into the picture and tricked them both. <laughs> the devil came in and tricked them both. And sin entered into the world. When sin entered into the world, everything started going bad. Man was born in sin. Everything started turning crazy here on the earth. And so finally, about 4,400 years ago, God looked down on the earth and said, I see nothing good down there anymore. My creation has been ruined by sin. And so God sent a great flood onto the earth. And we're going to talk a little bit about the flood later on. I should show you some pictures of some neat things about the Noah's Ark. God created a great flood on the earth. And then man began to start again with Noah. And you know what the beauty is, kids? You know what happened 2,000 years ago? God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into this earth to die for you and for me. So that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and today you'll have an opportunity, and we'll just accept Jesus into our heart, that we can actually live with Him forever and forever and forever. And I believe there's going to be some really neat things in heaven. Some people don't agree with me, but that's okay. I got my own picture. Uh, what, what heaven's all about. And I don't know, maybe, maybe we even get to see something up there, maybe, maybe a dinosaur or something, I don't know. But Jesus was born, Jesus died for your sins, because Jesus is coming back again someday for you and for me. So I'm, for with, this, with this portion here, and what I want to do is I want to bring Pastor Sharon out, and I want her to show you something here about bringing something out of nothing. Uh, let me see if I, I've been trying to listen back there, that make sure he doesn't creep up. <clears throat> Not that he would, but let's see. He's saying that we can't create something from nothing, right? That there was something that kept, there was nothing that kept spinning around and nothing got small. How can nothing get small, right? So what I'm going to do is we're going to try and make something from nothing and see if it works. Let me see. What's something that's really good? Um, chicken wings. No, I might get into just, um, do what? Peanut butter and jelly is good, but I'm going to do something with peanut butter and jelly after a while. Um, how about, what's something else that tastes good? We already have donuts. How about cupcakes? You guys like, you guys like cake? All right, listen. What goes in the cake? What's an ingredient in cake? Let's see if we make something from nothing. All right, what's one of the ingredients? Thank you. All right, we're going to take some flour. Here's my flour. Right? All right, we'll 
put some flour in here. We'll make a mess, but we'll let this mark clean it up later. All right, and then, all right, we need an egg. All right. No. Come here, let me crack the egg. <laughs> Just play. <laughs> Shell and all, right? I like crunchy cupcakes, don't you guys? All right, well, what else goes into a good cake? Back there. Cake batter, we're making the cake batter. What do we put in the cake batter to make the cake batter? All right, I need a cup of milk. <laughs> Measuring cup. Okay. You gotta be just right because you know you don't want it to be too fluffy or too flat. So pour in the cup of milk. Oh, that's probably enough. All right, anything else that we need to put in here? What else do we need to do? Right here. Sugar, some sugar. All right, come here. Do we have any candy or anything like that? Don't put candy or anything like that. Well, I have that one before. All right, we need some sugar. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your hand and blow a kiss over there. And blow a kiss over there. That's some sugar, right? We need it to be sweet. So kiss your hand and blow the kiss right up here. All right, we got some sugar in there. Now you're going to sit right back here. I have some for you in a minute. All right, anything else that needs to go in there? We have flour and sugar and eggs and... And a little bit, well, I use self rising flowers, so I don't need baking soda or salt. That's a good idea, though, if it didn't have, if it wasn't self rising. Anything else? Some water. That might make it a little bit water. I think the milk probably tastes good with water. You think that's probably all the ingredients that makes it? How about some vanilla or something for flavor, maybe? We'll just put in just a little bit because we don't want it to have too much vanilla. It will turn brown. Now I don't know if I'm going to have a white cake or a brown cake. I'm, oh well. All right, and I didn't bring a spoon. So, all right, so we've got a lot of nothing in here, right? All right, so now what else do you need to do for a cake? Put it in the oven. All right, you're going to put it in the oven. And then what are you going to do? Yeah. Do I need to turn on some heat? Yes. I like the oven. Oh. What? Don't play with fire at home. It burns, right? All right, so you think it's in long enough? How long do you cook nothing? Nothing. You don't have no time at all, right? Nothing's done soon. All right, so instead of nothing, we've got, look at that. I put in too much vanilla. I didn't know if it was going to be white or chocolate, so we got one of each. So we know that we really can't make something from nothing, right? It doesn't really happen, except with God. You can't say, no, I did have my little sugar up here. You get to come get one. And we have, actually have a cupcake for everybody here that has icing on it. I didn't want to put icing in the oven because it might have melted it. So we waited about the icing. That's okay. Don't eat it just yet, though. So we're going to save the rest of the cupcakes. There's enough for everybody to get a cupcake later. But this is what I want you to understand. Can we really take a pan and throw in a bunch of nothing and come up with cupcakes? No. Well, in the same thing with creation, you can't take nothing and swirl nothing together and squish nothing up and all of a sudden you have man. It doesn't happen. It happens when God speaks it. God can speak things into existence that's not there. Just the voice, just his command, let there be light and there's light. Just his command, let there be grass and there's grass. We can't make something from nothing. We have to have something to build up. Even people that invent things and create things, they have to have something in their hands to create that with, don't they? They have to have something to start with. Where did that something come from? From God. God is the only one that can create something from nothing. Thank you. That's pretty amazing. Sometimes you can do things like that. We know it doesn't really happen. There's little things to it that make them happen. But isn't that amazing that God said, let there be light? You realize was, the whole universe was dark until God said, let there be light. And light came flying out of his mouth. This whole universe lit up like a light bulb. It's absolutely amazing, the power of God. We believe that in the beginning, God. They believe in the beginning, what? Dirt. They believe that dirt turned into everything. I believe that God turned everything exactly the way he wanted it to go. So yes, this could be your grandpa. If you, if you believe in evolution, this, this could be a picture of your grandfather 
and your grandmother. How many of them, how many of them that looks like granny and grandpa? I don't think so, dude. Well, you're agreeing. Be careful, there's nobody's in here, are they? <laughs> well, but if, but if they believe that the rocks turned in, turned in to people, maybe that could be your grandpa. I won't ask the same question, okay? <laughs> that could possibly be grandpa, but that doesn't look like your grandpa, does it? What is it? It's a monkey. Yeah, it's like an ape. What about your grandma? What, what do you think? That possibly your grandma? I don't think so. There, you think it is? <laughs> I'll tell you, be very careful, man. <laughs> That's why we don't let the adults in here. <laughs> so we've got to talk freely. Grandma and Grandpa were never a monkey. And let me tell you something, kids, neither were you. You did not come from a rock. You did not come out, come out of anything at all except for what God created you to be. Let's say our verse one more time. We're going to bring out the puppets. In the beginning... Say it with me. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created everything. Let's let the puppets turn it on now, sing a song about, You don't make no monkey out of me. Keep that monkey quiet. <laughs> well, a monkey's hand looks a lot like mine. His eyes and his ears show a great design. I might like bananas climbing up a tree, but don't you make a monkey out of me. Sing it with me, children. Don't you make a monkey out of me. Don't you, don't you. Puppets, man. Y'all like puppets as much as I do? I, I love, I, I love me some puppets. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God, God looked down and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, the cattle and the creeping thing and the beast of the earth after his kind. And God said, and it was so. So everything that God spoke into existence, he said exactly the way it was. I could share some things with you about some really neat animals, but we're not going to have time for all that today. God said that in exactly six days, he created the heaven and the earth, and he said everything that's in them. Now, how many of y'all believe that we find dinosaur bones? Y'all, are y'all with me? We do. We find dinosaur bones all the time, okay? So were dinosaurs ever alive? Absolutely. Dinosaurs lived on this earth. There's no doubt about that. But God, God said that in six days he created everything that was in the earth. So God had to create dinosaurs on that, on that day, which means we tell you Adam must have seen dinosaurs. Adam had to have seen dinosaurs. They lived with Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve and all the animals, including the dinosaurs. And yes, one other thing, dinosaurs were on the ark with Noah. Have you ever seen a picture of the ark? One thing you'll never see, look in the pictures real careful, you'll never see dinosaurs. Because people have tried to take the dinosaurs away from the ark. Now, how old, do you know how old Noah was when he built the ark? 600 years old. 600. How smart do you think he was? <laughs> 
I was a pretty smart dude, okay? Plus he had God saying, build it this big. I want you to build it this big, this high, this long. And by the way, Noah, stick some cages in there too, man, because I got some visitors coming with you. Okay, Noah, have you ever thought about Noah? You know, man, build a boat. Come on, man, this is a big boat. And all of a sudden, God starts bringing the animals, and the animals come in two by two out, out of the ark. Noah did not bring the animals. God brought the animals. But the one thing about it, kids, is there had to be dinosaurs on the ark because remember what we sang about earlier? Job saw dinosaurs, and that was after the flood. So we know the dinosaurs were on the ark. I don't think dinosaurs were big. I think Noah was so smart, he was like, okay, let's see, we got this guy here, he's 60 feet tall, uh, he's not going to fit on my boat. Okay, so, hey, you got any babies? Let's bring some babies. I think Noah brought a lot of babies on the ark, as is what probably happened. Remember, he was very, very smart. He knew how to do things. Um, not a dumb man at all. So yes, dinosaurs were on the boat with Noah. We'll make them back another time and talk about the flood and stars and stuff like that. Well, let's hear our puppets one more time sing about stock the boat, Noah, stock the boat. shelter from the storm Through 40 days and nights you'll stay dry and warm So get the animals on two by two Remember that through every storm your God will see you through Stock the boat, Noah! <laughs> yeah, we always talk about Noah brought all the animals and put them on the ark two by two, but who really brought the animals? God brought the animals. Noah's job was to build the ark. And you know what the interesting thing is, is that God was already inside the ark waiting for, waiting for him and waiting for all of the animals. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I want you to understand some kids, as long as you're going to school, as many, many that are out there now, they're in the books. They're not teaching this anymore. They want you to believe in that goofy story I just told you about this evolutionary thing. They say because the fins look like our hands, well, maybe they all came from the same thing. No, they didn't. God gave you five fingers and he gave the fish five bones in his fin. But you know what he did with the fish? He covered them all up. You know why? Because the fish has to swim. The fish needs a good swimming thing, whereas you, we only go in the water 
kind of have fun. We don't have to be in the water, do we? So you don't have to have covered up things. Because these things are being taught, they're being taught to all of these, all the different school age kids now. I want you to remember, I hope that one thing you've learned today is in the back of your mind, you know that God created everything and God created you to be very special. But in the midst of all of that creation, you can look out the stars now. You can see the things David saw. You can look out at the trees. You can look out at the forest. You can look out at the oceans and look at and see all the fish. The traces of God's hand is in everything. You, everything you see out there, it's like, wow, man, I mean, God did that. And you begin to see how big God it is. So I'm going to bring Pastor Sharon out one more time. She's got another little thing to demonstrate to you. You know, I always, I've always learned that uh, when Pastor Dick is speaking, I need to bring my lunch with me because he gets a little, he like, he got, it takes a while. <laughs> so uh, I, I like peanut butter and jelly. You guys have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Yeah. I might have enough to share, but I know that I brought my jelly. And uh, I just seem to... I'm missing something. I don't have a knife. It's kind of hard to get it out and spread it without a knife, is it? You know, I saw this done one time, so we're going to see. Uh, maybe we can do it again. We'll see. Let's see. What do I got? Do I got my jelly? I got my peanut butter. All right, let's see. Yep, got my peanut butter. Grape jelly is always better than peanut butter. So I got my peanut butter, and I got my jelly, and I got my bread. Two slices. I'm not going to do a double decker today. I'm going to put it in here, keep it fresh. Close this up so I can have it later. Now, how is it that I got to do this? Let's see. Look good already. All right. I'm going to get my jelly and I'm going to get my peanut yeah, butter. I got to get it all on my bread. Oh, I know. I got to put it in a in a lunch bag, right? Take my sandwich, put it in the lunch bag, and then I gotta get my knife. I got my knife here somewhere. No, well, we're not gonna worry about a knife. I'm gonna, let's see, do I have somebody that can help me? I don't even have my tape or scissors or can you can you help me? Can, wait a minute, can you follow instructions? Are you sure you can follow instructions? Let me go there and see if I can find my knife first. I don't even have tape or scissors, so come on up here and let me help you. We've got our sandwich in here, right? Our bread. we got to get that peanut butter and that jelly over here. You're going to hold on that peanut butter and jelly. Now let's see if we can get this done right. I need you to hold this just right here. Let's see, turn this way. You gotta aim it just right. Let's see. Move this out of the way. Alright. What we're gonna do, uh, Miss Suzanne Archibald is giving me a wonderful word. I just love it. It's called Woohoo! <laughs> so we're gonna do that in just a minute. So we've got our see, there it goes. Alright, so we've got our jelly. So we've got our here. And we've got to figure out how to get the peanut butter and the jelly. I tell you what, first of all, let's see if we can just practice a little bit. We're going to switch them. I'm going to make that peanut butter fly over Katie's hair. It's washable. And over here where the jelly is. And when we take the jelly, we're going to let it fly right over his head. And it's going to go over here. You guys want to see this? Yeah. So do I. Okay, here we go. We're going to say, watch it. Okay. Switch it back too. Watch this. Woohoo! <laughs> See, there was my jelly. <laughs> and there's my peanut butter. They switched back. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's see if we can try this a little bit different. We're going to do two hoos because we got the peanut butter's going to go from there and it's going to come over here. The jelly's going to go from there and it's going to go over there. And somehow we're going to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. 
Well, I'm hoping somebody's helping me. All right, so we're going to do two hoo hoos. Here we go. Are you ready? Tell you what, why don't you help me do the hoo hoos? Ready? We're going to do two hoo hoos. I'm going to do one and you're going to do one. That'll work, right? I'm going to get out of the way because I don't like jumping my hair. All right, here we go. I'm going to say one hoo hoo and you're going to say the other. I'm going to say hoo hoo for the peanut butter. You're going to say hoo hoo for the jelly. Are you ready for hoo hoo? <laughs> do you know what you're supposed to say? Okay. Wonderful job. Wonderful job, Pastor Sharon. That's, that's good. That's good stuff. Isn't it amazing, though, that everything we see, you can always see the traces of God every, everywhere. People look up in the skies many times, and it's like, man, how in the world did that all get there? But you know what? The, one of the magnificent things I think about how big God is, if you ever begin to think about how big God is, I want you to try to remember this, kids. That God created the heavens, God created the stars. He said, let there be, and their stars happen. But then you know what God did? He named every star. How many of y'all think when you look up in the heavens tonight that you could name all them stars? I, I don't think I can come up with enough names. I, re, I really don't think I know that many names. But God said he named and he numbered even the stars. That's how big God is. And yet, that same God loves you and I, loves everything you are, loves everything you do. I'm going to show you something here real quick using, I want to tell you actually a story using a watermelon. And the beauty of it is later on when we get all done here, you're going to help me eat this thing. How many are in for that? How many like watermelon? All right, all right. I, 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 I. <laughs> yeah, woo hoo. <laughs> I need that cut in half and get another piece of it. How many know what the inside of a watermelon actually looks like? How many of y'all, anybody ever eaten watermelon here before? Come on. Ah, yeah. I was, I, we were eating some yesterday. I was like, man, this is like one of my favorites, man. I'm like crazy about watermelon. The watermelon is a very interesting, uh, I guess it's a fruit or is it veg maybe a vegetable. I'm not sure. Uh, but it grows on the ground anyway. It grows on the vine down there. But what does the watermelon look like on the inside? Tell, give me some ideas. It's got red on the inside. Yes, some are pinkish. Well, this will be a red one, I hope. Uh, I didn't think about that. But if they're red on the inside, what else do watermelons have? They got seeds on the inside of them. That white stuff, they're the, kind of the, the rind type, type thing on the inside. Have you ever thought that the Bible, the Bible story is actually inside of a watermelon? The Bible story is actually inside the watermelon. What I want to show you here is this is the inside of our watermelon. I really should be doing some front there, but well, this will work. Here's the seeds in here. 
You know what the seeds represent? The seeds represent the sin inside of your life. The Bible says, you know, that we got to be washed white as snow, which means the sin in our life would be all the, the blackness of the world. The Bible says the darkness of the world. Uh, these are all the sins of the world, uh, the dark things that are, that are in our lives. And these are the things, kids, that are separating uh, us from God. Uh, you know, some people say, well, I don't know if I have any sin. Uh, well, did you ever disobey your parents? Uh, probably, yeah, I, I did. Okay, I got to confess, I did. So, yeah, did I sin? I sure did. I had sin in my life that had to go away. I remember uh, different people do different things. It might be stealing, it might be cheating, it might be lying. Sometimes we tell little lies to get out of trouble. We know what God says, kids? God says that's a lie. It doesn't matter if it's a little one or a big one. So these are all the seeds inside, inside the watermelon here. They represent the sin inside of our life. And I've kind of tried to take them out because they need to be plucked out. But you know what? Whereas many times we're trying to get, we're trying to pluck the seeds, the sin out of our own life, aren't we? But God has another answer. The red in the watermelon represents the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus came out of heaven and came down to earth. And what he did is he swallowed up, he washed away all of the sins inside of your life and mine. So that you don't have to do anything. Any sins that are inside of your life, you don't have to do nothing to get rid of them. Jesus says, I did it all. Jesus says, I died on the cross for you and for you and for you, every person in this room. He says, I died for you. So the sin inside of our life is completely washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And before I go any farther with my watermelon, let's hear the puppet sing, Washed by the Blood. I've never known before Washing my sins away Now I'm having lots of fun Got the devil on the run Man, I'm glad I met God's son Washing my sins away He's blessing, healing He's so good and he's so great Yeah, loving, forgiving Yeah, washing my sins away Swaddling clothes Came to live on earth below Just because he loves us so Washing my sins away Gave his life on Calvary Rose again to set us free Did it all for you and me Washing my sins away He's blessing, healing He's so good and he's so great Yeah, loving yeah, washing my sins, let's praise a while He's good He's great He's Lord He's God He's strong He's big He's mine Yeah, washing my sins away Tell you what this means Jesus the Nazarene Will cleanse your heart and make you clean Washing your sins away So ask him in your heart today Humble yourself and pray He'll come into your heart to stay Washing your sins away He's blessing, healing He's so good and he's so great Washing my sins away He's blessing, healing He's so good and he's so great Yeah, loving, forgiving Yeah, washing my sins away He is blessing, healing He's so good and he's so great Yeah, loving, forgiving Yeah, washing my sins away 
Washing my sins away. Hey, for the cave puppets. Hey. Let's get back to our watermelon for just a couple minutes, kids. You know, if our sins are, if our sins, let's start cutting that up. Our sins are, 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 are represented by the seeds. The blood of Jesus Christ came down and washed our sins away to set us free. Remember, kids, there's nothing you have to do except to accept Jesus into your heart. There's nothing you can do for your salvation. But the beauty is, all of this, you notice, is wrapped in a white rind. Because as dark as our lives may look with the sin inside of it, when the blood of Jesus Christ comes into us and washes that sin away, when God looks at you, He sees your soul white is snow, the Bible tells us. And when we become white as snow on the inside, kids, on the outside, the green represents a new life. We can now live a new life because everything on the inside has been washed white as snow by the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you all to bow your heads for one second with me, if, if you would. We've, we've talked a lot today about dinosaurs. We've talked a lot about creation. I love to talk about these things. But the most important thing I want to talk about today is salvation. And I want to know, has anybody in here, with all, all your eyes closed, nobody looking around? I don't want you looking at me. Don't look at the dinosaurs. Just give me one minute here, kids. Has anybody in here ever not accepted Jesus into your heart? Or is there anybody in here that would like today to accept Jesus into your heart? He can take all the sin of your life, kids, wash it away, and make you, make you clean, make you white as snow. If anybody in here is not sure if you've ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to make sure you talk to me or Pastor Sharon uh, before the day's over. Either one of us can walk you through and tell you how to do it. It's so simple how we do it. But Jesus Christ came, He died for you, that you may have your sins washed away forever and ever. Pray with me now. Father in heaven, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you for these kids. I thank you, Lord, for the blessing that we have had today to come today, Lord, to share some of the things about creation uh, with these kids. I pray, Lord, blessings upon every child in this room. I pray, Father, that you'd help them, Lord, to grow, to love you, Father, to accept you as their personal Savior, Lord, to understand what it means to truly be a Christian. Bless these kids now, Lord. I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to serve you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, I thank you. And I praise you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a great big praise round. That's all we, that's all we actually have for today, kids. We are, uh, again, we are Cave Ministries. If you ever have questions about dinosaurs, we have a website you can go to. Or tell your mom and dad that you saw some guy, you know, the goofy looking guy talking about dinosaurs today. We have a website out there that has all kinds of information about other things too.